I would argue that 32 H&R Magnum is basically 30 Super Carry on Pot. Welcome back to Bullets and Brass, folks. Today we are talking about 32 H&R Magnum. This is a round that has been popular for quite a while, but never huge. It never really got super popular. And I think part of that is the marketing. It never got a ton of hype, but also it's niche. It is trying to live in this niche where it is a modern version of a classic round. You know, it it isn't quite ideal for any of the modern functions that people are looking for. So it never got a lot of attention. <clears throat> now, what is 32 H&R Magnum? So it's a round that came out in 1984, developed by Harrington, Harrington and Richardson, working in conjunction with Federal. Federal is really pushing these skinnier, mid to high power pistol rounds, 32 H&R, 327 Federal Magnum, uh, and then 30 Super Carry, all are Federal. Hey, if you like this kind of content, if you like my channel, if you watch more than once, hit subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, something. It really helps out the channel. If you regularly watch my content, if you like what I'm doing here, if you would like to support the channel, go to Patreon and sign up. The hot chocolate tier, I mean, you guys know, I'm, I'm a freaking hot chocolate addict. I need all the help I can get there. Plus, you know, if you want to see more content that requires me to spend money, it would help. Uh, I really cannot afford to be spending money on this channel right now. So any assistance, greatly appreciated. Thanks, guys. It is essentially a lengthened 32 Smith & Wesson log. Not anything revolutionary. Uh, a lot of people have pointed out that it's basically identical to older 3220 Winchester, which is a, a black powder round. It was a rimmed bottleneck round. The new 32 H&R is a straight wall rim cartridge, generally designed for pistols, but also is used in lever action rifles. 32 H&R, uh, 3220, was considered a pretty decent round for general use. It was not a high power hunting round. It was not, you know, you're not gonna go hunting buffalo. It was not really what the military was after, but for the average person, self-defense, um, general range use, hunting deer, it was considered sufficient. Uh, we generally don't consider 32 H&R sufficient for that, but that's mostly because our attitudes toward it have changed. Because it's developed from 32 Smith & Wesson Long, firearms chamber for it, assuming they feed it, the, the chamber will take it, 32 Smith & Wesson and 32 Smith & Wesson Long. So you have some options. Interestingly, if you have 32, or sorry, 327 Federal, you can also use all of the prior cartridges. Um, again, feeding dependent, but most of the 32 Smith and uh, 30, 327 Federals are revolvers, so not really a factor. We generally, and I mean, this is me and, and obviously the market to some extent, consider it marginal as a self-defense load, but doable. Um, and really, it depends on the load. And the reason I say doable but marginal is that if you look at 30 Super Carry, which people at this point consider the low end of acceptable, you know, meaning you're not down to 380 where you're, you're accepting a compromise in power in order to get it into the size bracket. This is a, a 9 millimeter equivalent, right? But not quite there. Well, 32 H&R is a little lower. Uh, more commonly, it's used where you might have otherwise used 30, uh, sorry, a 22 long rifle or a 22 magnum, 22 rimfire magnum. Small game hunting, coyotes and smaller. Um, if you're a trapper, if you're a hunter and you, you know, it's done, you just want to give it an ethical kill. Yeah, uh, it is a good round for that. If you're looking for a minimal recoil revolver, also a good option. Uh, compared to most of the other self-defense revolver rounds that are in the same power bracket, very soft recoil. Before I get into some more details uh, in the weeds here, the other main use for it is cowboy action shooting. That is where I first ran into it. That is where I think a lot of it gets used. For cowboy action shooting, uh, younger folks, older women, 
um, meaning you know just you've got arthritis, your hand strength is not up to up to what you need for 38s anymore. It lets you use a smaller gun and still get the job done for uh, cowboy action shooting. The problem is you have to reload because getting ammo for it in sufficient volumes is tough. Now we talked about power already, but power is significantly higher than 32 ACP. It's really, you're talking power ranges from 170 foot pounds for the lightweight stuff to 320, 325 for full power defensive loads, which puts it basically double 32 ACP uh, at the 320 range. Keep in mind that is under what uh, 30 Super Carry does by a little bit. On the other hand, it's really not a fair comparison because it operates at the same pressure as 32, uh, sorry, 32 ACP, which is less than half the pressure of 30 Super Carry. Just, yeah. The key is the longer case lets you use slower powders. You generally have a longer barrel. You're not running this in you know, short little snubby barrels normally. If you do, you lose a lot of that speed. But the larger case lets you run slower powder. A slightly longer barrel gives you time to burn it all. You develop the same power at lower pressure. On the other hand, 30 Super Carry is trying to develop a lot of power in a very short case, in a very short barrel, fast powder, high pressure, a little more recoil. Little amusing anecdote here. 32 H&R Magnum uses a slightly smaller diameter bullet than 30 Super Carry. Uh, 313 for 30 Super Carry, 312 for the 32 H&R Magnum. You can never trust what they put in the name, guys. Now, now for some fun stuff, really. It has an old school vibe. It reminds you of classic black powder rounds. It looks like an old school revolver round. It really gives you that old time Western feel. And I like it. I really think that I, that's one of the things that has kept it popular over the years. I think that's one of the things that has made it popular for cowboy action shooting. It really fits the role, but on the other hand, you have a modern design. <clears throat> You're not a bottleneck round. You don't have a really big rim that interferes with feeding in the lever action rifles. You have a case that feeds smoothly. You have bullets that are available. It is a modern round built for modern guns, but the pressure is still low enough that you don't need a big heavy gun. You don't need that, that you know, Ruger Vaquero or Blackhawk or something like that. You can put it in a smaller frame gun and still be safe. So yeah, I think nostalgia, I think that people wanting that vibe are one of the things that are keeping that caliber going. Now, obviously right now, ammo is completely unobtainium. Mean, if you put it in ammo seat, you get nothing back. But... It was out there for a long time. A lot of the people that do shoot it reload for it, so eh. So if you're looking for a classic feeling round, but with a more modern design, a little more power than a lot of the similar classic designs, give this one a look once ammo comes available. I mean, you, you gotta wait. Right now, there's literally no ammo. Um, but a nice little single action revolver and a lever action, great pair for younger shooters, for women, for anybody just looking for a lightweight, moderate power. Um, I really think it's a great round as long as you respect and understand the limitations because you've got enough power for most functions it's designed for. It isn't a round that is underpowered. It's just not the latest and greatest highest power monstrosity. We don't all want that. Take care, guys. Have fun. Stay safe. Keep shooting.